everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of uh, Dose to Pros Academy SQL Unlocked series. I'm Bali. With me is Rick. Uh, hey, Rick. How's it going? Hey, good today. How about you? Pretty good. I think so. The weather is changing down here. Summer is setting in. Oh, yeah. We are really excited. Yeah, in Seattle. doing a lot more yard work. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So today's topic is SQL injection, which is, I think, on every SQL developer's mind. I know? think so, too. And keeping your uh, T-SQL code safe. So Rick, tell us a little bit about SQL injection. Well, it's something to look out for because, as you know, computers are literal. They'll do what you say even if that's not what you meant. We humans are a little smarter than that. I'll give you an example. I always like pulling your five-year-old daughter into it. Imagine the enthusiasm if you came to her with a bowl full of gumdrops. Mm -hmm. She likes candy, right? Oh, yeah. And you have like, let's say there's ten of them in this little bowl. And you have a red one and a yellow one and a pink one. And you have ten different colors. And you say, okay. Choose the color you want, and you can have it. And she says, Daddy, I want the one that's green and not green. That would be a tough one. <laughs> well, you would say, well, no, 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 because if you think of the criteria, if she wants the green one or the not green one, that's all of them. She gets to eat all ten. There you go. <laughs> so if you can trick SQL Server into saying, I want the green one and the not green one, it'll give you every record. Mm -hmm. but what if you're the customer? Should you get every record? No, so. I yeah. I don't think so. That makes the news. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be able to lock this down and teach it when uh, somebody's trying to pull a sly one. Yeah. You don't want to get in the news. Yeah. Not in, not in this manner. No. So uh, let's start off with a simple example. See on my screen here where uh, we're only going to give it one gumdrop, or here in this case, we're going to give it one employee. Right. And I just get one record because maybe you're. You're on a commerce site and you say, what's my ID, what's my password, and you get your information and nobody else's. So here we're passing in employee one, and we get Alex Adams. Now, what if I said, I want em every record where the employee is one or the employee is not one? Well, employee two is not one, right? Yep, employee three is not one. This is a fancy way to get every record. every record. And if you notice, the only difference between the two queries is I added more language. Mm -hmm. So what if a hacker just adds something onto the end of a very simple, innocent statement and gets more records? Then they pull up your entire database, and then you become t you know, the next Target department store, and they say, <laughs> how did all those credit cards get out? Yep. So here is another fancy one, because the hacker probably doesn't know the name of your field. He doesn't know if it's called employee one, amp one, customer one, but he knows that seven equals seven. So if you're employee one, or if you believe seven equals seven, which everybody should, then this is a fancy way to get every single record. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what well, happens. Prevent that. Well, let me show you what we're trying to prevent. Okay. Here we have a dynamic SQL where we said, okay, we want a select statement, we want a from statement, we want a criteria, and this last line, the one, is on a box on a website that the user enters. So if the user enters a one, they get a one. If the user enters two, they get a two. Mm -hmm. So this is the user, the part of highlighted is user controlled, the other three are fixed by us. So this query looks like a success, we got what we wanted, the user input is right here, they put in what they want to state, they get their record. But we've learned, with a little ingenuity, you could say, what's your employee number? And you say, my employee number is one or seven equals seven. Mm -hmm. And we run it. You get everything back. We get everything back. This is known as SQL injection. They actually injected their number plus some SQL on the end of your intended statement. Mm -hmm. Which is not good. How do you prevent all this? Well, you prevent it by not using the exec statement. The exec statement has really no way of locking this down. But there is another way to do dynamic SQL, which is the execute sp underscore execute SQL stored procedure. This one realizes the user input is a parameter and is not to be appended to the end of the statement as more SQL code. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I would declare the variable set it to what I want, and notice inside my quotes, I appear to have a hard-coded variable, but I can swap that out by executing the SQL statement and passing in user selection, which matches that name, and then specifying that the user selection is one. So, I'm going to run this by the innocent person who honestly just put in the one and gets their one record. Now this exact same code with the uh, smart aleck trying to put the one of the seven equals seven at the end, mm -hmm. when they run with the sp underscore execute SQL, fails to convert that to the needed value. 
Okay. So it just gets an error. Mm -hmm. Now that is a pretty nifty trick. So we have uh, learned that how to secure your SQL data, how to secure your SQL queries actually, and making sure that using SP execute SQL is the way to go, especially when you are getting information or fields from the web. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. This any is user input. Any user input. And this, this works for any data types and, uh, which are coming in. And yes. Basically, you're defining your variable and the data type down there. Yes. Right? If, if you pass in, and if you have a decimal data type versus like a Boolean, then it'll basically expect it to be a Boolean data type, right? Yeah, it will pass it in the way it would a normal SQL query. Okay, great, great. This is some good trick right here. And uh, I think so everybody who's writing SQL should know this. Having SQL injection and preventing it from being part of your code is the topmost thing for every SQL developer. Mm -hmm. All right, so this was great. Uh, please provide feedback for upcoming episodes, and thanks for joining us. We will see you next time. Thank you.